So um, from our center combined with the experience from Nova Scotia, we uh, published this paper in Annals of Thoracic Surgery in 2016, where we looked at 534 uh, consecutive patients with acute type A dissection. We wanted to develop a risk score for mortality in these uh, patients. And these were the different risk factors that we analyzed in univariate and multivariate analysis, uh, all of the sort of standard type of uh, risk factors that you would expect for a type A dissection population. And we see that hospital uh, mortality was highly dependent upon uh, malperfusion. Mortality was much lower if there was no malperfusion present, but particularly coronary or visceral malperfusion were uh, deadly entities. Uh, that uh, uh, had a, a significant effect on the patient's outcome. And when we did a risk-adjusted multivariable analysis for mortality uh, in this uh, large group of patients, we saw that malperfusion syndrome was a statistically significant uh, predictor, in particular visceral malperfusion with a odds ratio of uh, 3.0. Um, the importance of mouth perfusion has been demonstrated in many different uh, publications uh, that it leads to increased mortality, it leads to re increased reinterventions after the procedure, it leads to increased uh, mouth perfusion sy syndrome after the, uh, is associated with um, new post op mouth perfusion after the operation, as well as a very high rate of stroke. Uh, in addition, those rare patients that present with paralysis. Uh, pre-surgery uh, um, almost never have uh, um, resolution of their paralysis after a conventional uh, type A dissection operation. So the OSIRIS device enables us to approach this malperfusion syndrome in a very active form. It's not the only way of, uh, of approaching malperfusion. There's also, as we know, the frozen elephant uh, trunk operation using a hybrid uh, stent prosthesis in order to expand blood flow into the true lumen and decrease blood flow into the false lumen. Having said that, uh, for those of you who have done frozen elephant trunk operations, you know that this is a challenging operation to do um, because you're performing an anastomosis very deep in the chest under elective circumstances. Under emergency circumstances at nighttime with a dissected aorta, it's a particularly difficult operation. This is not something that every uh, cardiac surgeon um, can competently perform for uh, every type A dissection patient. And that's why we think the Osiris medical uh, dissection stent is such an uh, advance uh, because it's something, it, it achieves basically the same a sort of outcome as you do with a frozen elephant trunk operation or a similar sort of outcome, but is much more uh, easy to perform and is something that can be performed by a larger number of uh, surgeons. Uh, York Kemfoot will describe it in detail and show a case video and therefore I will not show it too much here, but just to explain again that the goal is to increase flow into the true lumen and collapse the uh, false lumen in the aortic arch and proximal uh, descending aorta while uh, getting a good seal at the proximal suture line, uh, just proximal to the brachiocephalic trunk. Why, why is that uh, good seal there so important? Because we know from previous studies that a new distal anastomotic uh, new entry, a Dane, is present in 50 to 70% of patients after a conventional um, type A aortic dissection operation. And these Danes are uh, a malignant entity in, in, in that they lead to pressurization of the false lumen at the very most proximal um, portion of the dissected uh, aorta, leading to true lumen collapse and uh, possibly malperfusion and definitely to rapid aortic growth. As you can see in this example here, after a previous uh, open hemi-arch anastomosis, you see this large Dane right at the anastomotic suture line, uh, denotated by the black arrow, followed by uh, dilatation of the aortic arch and proximal descending aorta. Uh, Bartosz Rosowski, Rosowski and, and his group in uh, Freiburg looked at this carefully and found that um, the location of the luminal communication at discharge uh, plays a large role on 
the future dilatation of the aorta. So if the communication, the more proximal it is, the more the aorta uh, tends to uh, dilate with time. And they found that this uh, Dane, which they had a different name for, but Dane seems to be the, the most common sort of uh, name we have now in the literature, was, a, uh, was highly associated with accelerated aortic growth after uh, the surgical repair. And we also know that uh, Dane, which can also be demonstrated using TEE alone, um, uh, as it was in the IRAD registry, uh, that it can be shown in about 45% of type A dissection patients po uh, post-repair, and that these proximal entries are associated with worse long-term survival uh, and more rapid uh, aortic growth and, and um, negative remodeling of the aorta uh, during uh, follow-up. This is another study uh, from Japan that was published in EJCTS uh, in 2017, showing that um, if you have a patent false lumen without a Dane, uh, that is the best uh, uh, prognosis uh, as compared to a patent uh, false lumen with a Dane uh, with regards to long-term uh, survival rate and uh, aortic growth. So this proximal suture line uh, opening uh, into the false lumen is a uh, not clearly identified uh, entity from the past, which we now know has a very adverse effect on long-term survival and long-term aortic uh, uh, remodeling rates um, after a type A dissection. And we now have an active treatment therapy against this entity. So in conclusion, type A aortic dissection is a highly lethal disease requiring emergency surgical intervention. Mortality rates remain high after successful surgery, uh, technically successful surgery, with malperfusion being a significant contributor to these um, uh, mortality rates. And even in a patient that has a follow, uh, successful surgical repair and is discharged home from the hospital in a clinically good um, condition, we know that the Dane is associated with a significant proportion of future aortic reinterventions uh, secondary to dilatation or rupture. 